No one wants to watch a cox Thor. It'll be tough to set a world best time with a shipwreck like that. You stay quiet, Mike. Hold on here for a second. Hey, you know what? Mute them and let me talk now. I want to talk now, okay? I'm Alex Del Sordo, and we are at another, another Coaches Yelling episode. This is number four, and uh, we're rolling with this thing. I have the three standards. I got the people, the veterans, and I got a new one. I got someone new. Uh, and if you are a rower um, and have been, have been following rowing for a while, you know who this woman is. She is uh, a very special guest for us, and she's going to add a lot of depth to some of the questions that we're talking about today. And I know for certain, because I've had these questions asked, uh, I know you're going to know what we're talking about, and I know you're all going to have an opinion. So when you have an opinion, give it to us, send it to us, go on YouTube, go on Instagram, give us your feedback. We want to know if you think they're right or think they're wrong. So far, episode two was launched and we've had over 20 comments. That seems like a small number, but that's a lot in rowing and it's only going to get bigger. So today we're going to start with Luke Walton. Luke Walton is uh, has been undefeated at the collegiate level. He is the founder of Rower Academy, the former ED of my favorite race, and has lost every single weekend here at, uh, at Coaches Yelling. Luke, welcome to the show. Thanks again for having me. I'm becoming a regular here. Uh, I finished second, uh, but I finished second to Eric Murray. So, you know, it, what was interesting is for, for the ego's sake, you want to believe that someone who's so good at rowing has some flaws somewhere. No. So I was hoping to best Eric Murray. He's got, he's got nothing. The guy's got it all. Superman <laughs> wins, is wins, real. Wins. No, I appreciate Superman. that. So next up is a winner, someone who, who has won in, in, uh, in our episodes of, of Coaches Yelling, uh, second episode. She is a two-time world champion and one-time gold medalist in the Olympics. Carrie Simmons, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm excited to be back, and I'm pretty fired up about the, the questions coming at us. So get ready, everyone. Oh, I think we're feeling good. Now, um, the, the next guest, uh, Olympic gold medalist, Lindsay Shoup, welcome to our show. Thanks for being here. Thank you a, a, a ton. Uh, here I am among you guys, some veterans here in terms of uh, coaching opinions. So hopefully yes. I can, can provide something new to the group. I brought my sunglasses just in <laughs> case anyone makes me cry. So. I got to tell you, <laughs> the, the next guest is going gonna, is gonna to really uh, gonna make it challenging for you. This guy has, he won the first episode uh, he is a crowd favorite to the folks listening and watching to our, our podcast and our, and our video. Mike Wallen, the program director of Chicago, a former Cal Bear, a former St. Joe's prep rower. Welcome to the show, Mike. Happy to be back. Uh, three, three Olympians against Wallen again. Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> again, the guy doesn't say much, and you got to really appreciate that. Now, uh, the first question is, uh, you know, I'm going to sit back and get ready for this because, you know, everyone watching and listening, I actually have a really strong opinion about this. Luke is going to be on the clock here in, in, in a couple seconds. But Luke, the first question, what should the NCAA, the IRA, the governing bodies of rowing do about lightweight rowing at the collegiate level? What should we be doing? You're on the clock. Yeah, so uh, I think it's important that we can admit when we're wrong. And uh, last episode, you asked the question, uh, what we should do with lightweight rowing. I made a blanket statement. We should just ax it. And it came at it from two angles. It came at it from the IOC angle at FISA level, and it came at it from high school. And the IOC is going to do what they're going to do at the high school level, defending the health of the athletes. Um, what I overlooked was an answer to collegiate. And after doing research for this question, I was pretty ignorant in my response. And I think that we should defend, if not expand, collegiate lightweight rowing. Um, the the uh, Eastern Sprints, uh, it is a, a big, big deal there um, and, and should be celebrated as such. And then there are two coaches out there. I read some comments from them, both Marty Crotty and, um, and Chris Kerber. Both of them are defending lightweight rowing for the right reasons that it's not always about sending athletes to the Olympics. So in my mind, I think it's about the experience, the student athlete experience. I still think we should defend high school health maybe not have high school rowing be yep. lightweight, but you can be recruited to be a lightweight rower in college. And the IOC is going to do what the IOC is going to do. Right, Luke, so let me, in let me interrupt, ways, man. Let me interrupt. Like, what, what, do you, what do you say, what, what do you mean by, um, I guess, how do we keep it going? Are you saying, do, do, we, do we maybe change the weight limits? Do we, because it is a very unhealthy thing. Let's be real. It's a very unhealthy thing forcing 
collegiate athletes to be 165 pounds or 155 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to think about that next go around because your time is up, unfortunately. But listen, you walk away with five points. And for those watching, I don't have my paddle with me today. I'm going to give you a thumbs up or down if I like what, what, I, what you say or if I don't like what you say. And unlike previous episodes, I'm going to challenge you a little bit more, uh, the, 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 the folks joining us. So next on the chopping block, because I think Carrie has a really, really strong opinion about this one. Carrie, I'm going to ask the question again, okay? What should the NCAA, the IRA, the governing bodies of rowing do specifically for lightweight rowing at the collegiate level? You are on the clock. Okay, so my answer, I'm going to go a little bit more specific. I'm going to talk about what we should do with lightweight women's rowing. I think I like we should it. merge it. So they should become NCA, part of the NCA women's teams. Mm -hmm. And how that would look is we need to restructure the racing program. We need it to mirror more what Olympic program looks like. So what I want to see is, you know, open weight quad, open weight straight four, no more Cox four. That boat has no feelings. Mm. Uh, women's eight, and then I want to see uh, maybe a double and a pair, but also for the lightweight events, I want to see a lightweight double and a lightweight straight four. You're talking so about bringing sculling double. into the collegiate realm. I mean, that doesn't correct. That, I mean, that's, that's a whole other topic. Experience. And, and you know what? People that are high school scholars would love this, they would want to keep with sculling. But the point mm -hmm. of this would be that it expands opportunities for lightweight rowers, in my opinion. Lightweights have been some of the grittiest athletes I've ever coached at the high school level. Take Stanford lightweight women's rowing. Those guys are fierce and they're hanging tough with open weights. So it'd be awesome to see those merge and it gives the coaches opportunities to, yes, boat about six lightweights. All right, time, but you know, time. Let's let, you know, okay. Carrie did something really unique. She added a topic that I think would spark even more debate and that's sculling at the collegiate level. It, Dad Bale's done it. They've tried it. I think it has some success. But, you know, there is a, there's an area in rowing that I think a lot of college coaches miss, and that's the ability to teach sculling really well. You know, Americans do a really good job teaching sweep rowing. I think they fall short doing sculling. So we're going to bring Lindsay Shoup in this one. Now, Lindsay, uh, you're, you're an Olympic gold medalist. You've trained at every possible level there is. Yep. Um, I want to know, and you're going to be on the clock here in a second, what should the governing bodies of rowing doing? be doing for lightweight rowing in the future? You're on the clock. I think a couple of things. Um, in terms of the health of the athlete, it's not just high school, it goes into college too. I mean, these are repercussions that last a lifetime because you're developing your bone mineral density. All these things happen into your 20s. It's not just like, boop, I'm done with high school, my body stops developing. So you're setting standards that we need to be able to teach at a young age. There are a lot of things taught for health generally at a young age that we're missing out on. So that's a huge thing we would have to increase knowledge for. To, uh, to Carrie's point about adding lightweight women specifically to the open weight program, there are a lot of athletes that fall in between. So let those athletes that are probably cutting be a natural, you know, 10 or 15, some, sometimes 20 pounds heavier, and they're going to hang even better with open weight athletes. The same goes for lightweight men, right? So yeah, they're used yeah. to being efficient. Rowing is about efficiency. So these bigger lightweights could probably pass some of the open weights at this point. I was always one of the smaller people. Here's another factor for you. So if we're looking at rowing something else to throw into this lightweight mix, historically lightweights have been private schools. If we're looking to make rowing more inclusive and not this elitist IV thing, lightweight rowing is really where only private schools have excelled. And at the women's collegiate level in the last almost 10 years, it's only been public schools in the top two. At the men's heavy level, it's been a, you know, a balance over the last, what, seven Time. years? So, oh wow, <laughs> Lindsay, you know, I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna mute you here. I mean, you're going on a roll. I could tell you just wanna keep on going on this one. Um, there's, you brought up an interesting point. It's like these, these in-betweeners and the biggest in-betweener in the world is Luke Walton. Luke Walton talks about it every week. He was the 185 pounder. He's the in-between kind of guy. And, you know, you kind of, you answered it well, the bone density, the fact that these athletes are still growing. But my, my, my concern is like, what do you do about the kids that are on that border? Because they're going to want to naturally be in a more competitive environment, right? And they'll be more competitive at the lighter weight, which hurts people. Mike Wallen, uh, we're going to bring you in here. Closing the first question round, um, you know, a guy, you, you, you coach high school women. So you know in and out how they handle this. Mike, the question is, at the collegiate level, what should we do with lightweight rowing? You're on the clock. Well, I, I mean, I've been coaching for 17 years professionally. I've never been able to produce a fast crew without at least one, if not several lightweights in the boat. 
Um, I agree with Kerry that they're often the toughest kids on the team. They bring a lot of inspiration. I, I really like lightweight rowers, but I think lightweight rowing is a well-intentioned disaster. I mean, it's, it's got uh, it's some positive things. Sure. But the races are close. Everyone's the same size. We got college opportunities for kids. I think that's great. We have amazing coaches coaching these athletes. I'm in no way advocating for them leaving the sport, but I mean, there's a lot of bad things too. I mean, it's a health risk in high school. It's a mental health risk in high school. And that's not going away as long as this is dangled in front of these kids to be a college athlete lightweight. Um, and it's not good, as Lindsay was saying, it's not good for them in, in school. I hear horror stories of kids staying in on Saturday nights in sweatsuits, eating lettuce to make uh, weight. I mean, that's not a healthy way to be in college. Um, and then look, I, again, I really disagree with Carrie about the NCAA. I think the NCAA Women's Championship is the best regatta in the world. I think it's so straightforward. I think changing the four to the quad might be a good idea, but I'm not into adding lane. Is your rowing. position, Mike, to say that you want it axed? You want it gone? You don't want lightweight rowing? Who wants to watch the lightweight version of Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt? No one would watch it. No <laughs> one would, everyone would be confused by it. Why do we care? No. Time. All right. Well, then there it is. So we have, I mean, we have one, one conflicting message uh, in this, and, and I appreciate that. So we're going to finish the question one. Uh, Luke in fourth with five. Uh, Mike and Carrie tied at six, uh, and Lindsay, uh, you know, the newbie with eight. So, Lindsay, it's pretty confident to say that you're going to advance well into the next rounds here. Um, on the chopping block, again, is the guy that is uh, never going to win this dang thing. It's <laughs> uh, is Luke. Now, the next question, should the IRA be folded into the NCAA and become an NCAA uh, program competition. So the IRA basically is gone and everything is under the rules and, and regulations of the NCAA. You're on the clock. Well, that did happen. Probably the first thing uh, that might go along with it is chopping lightweight rowing. So that, that's drawing me in a little bit. But um, I would say no. I mean, I think men's rowing was the first collegiate sport ever. It was fine before the uh, NCAA and I, I think it's fine now without it. Mm. Um, they still adhere to pretty much all the same rules in terms of amateurism. We sign all the same documents, practice hours, recruiting regulations. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're going to tell me that the NCAA is going to come in and really start funding men's rowing like it has with women's rowing and blow the sport up across the country, then absolutely I'm into it. But that's not what's going to happen. These teams are mostly run on endowments. Um, what makes and, you so sure about that? I mean, look at the NCAA women. I mean, I, I know it's well, women versus it's, men. but Look, because it's a men's sport and it's not a revenue generating sport. So in the Title IX world, not just rowing, but any, any sport is, not, is on the chopping block at some point. I don't want to give the NCAA that power. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, betting shirts. We get to bet our shirts. I don't want that going away. That's the coolest thing about our sport, potentially. And that's technically time, game. Time. I'm going to bring Lindsay in. Okay. Now, as a female athlete, someone, uh, a, a coach for years, Lindsay, the question for you, should the IRA be folded into, into the NCAA? You're on the clock. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, two things, Mike was saying that he loves the, you know, the simplicity of the NCAA regatta. I was just looking at the IRA regatta. There are tons of trophies over there. And I'm like, what are all of these? This is not particularly straightforward for me from an outside NCAA perspective. The other thing is whether it should or shouldn't, it's a matter of parity between men and women. So if men's rowing became an NCAA sport, we're now going to have to start talking football. And the reason why these teams have grown and a lot of athletes have fallen by the wayside is simply because of the parity and numbers between football. So if men's rowing, which is also a big sport, shoots over to the NCAA, you're going to drop your size of teams. That might be where those single double pair type events mm. on the men's side that might be oh. all that it would be on the men's side would be super wow. teams yeah they're not going to separate resources um, when the law requires them to put them on the women's side women's rowing on the other hand has benefited both because it has shot up numbers of people through the opportunities because of these sometimes 200 person squads like you know big schools like wisconsin things like that so it's grown rowing which has helped men's rowing and if we go back to the lightweight comment we'd probably lose lightweight men's rowing whether you wanted to or not by jumping in time the okay you know wow so in your position give me a thumbs up or down if i'm saying this right Lindsay. You, uh, you don't want them to be under the NCAA. Is that fair? Like, you want the IRA separate? It's thumbs up or down? You want, do you want the IRA to go into the NCAA or not? Oh, you're middle? <laughs> oh, down. Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, I got you. Next up, uh, Carrie. So, Carrie, I want to know your argument here. Where do you stand on this? Where do you stand on the IRA being folded into the NCAA? You're on the clock. 
All right. So look, I understand the arguments why the RA should become NCA because it would even the playing field for men's rowing, definitely give a lot more opportunity to male counter my male counterparts. Um, that being said, I don't see it happening without an amendment to Title IX. As Lindsay's saying, all these things would happen if that happened, to, if they became NCA. So do you amend the Title IX rule? Mm. Like, I don't, I'm a product of Title IX. I definitely defend that. It's definitely grown, you know, sport yeah. for women. So is that something that I'm willing to, that's a big cost. And I, I don't see that happening anytime soon, especially since there's already so much gender disparity in sport. Take women's soccer, U.S. You know, there was a big deal about them not being paid as much as their male counterparts. We need to fix that. There's a lot of things, I think, on the totem pole. IRA becoming, ceasing to exist, to become an NCA sanctioned sport for men, probably low on the totem mm. pole. All right, time. No one, no, one, no one takes my opinion here. All right, we got Luke up. Luke, a, 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 a member of an IRA team for years. Luke, does the IRA get folded into the NCAA? You're on the clock. Well, I think the original question was, should it? And then I'm going to say, well, should it and can it, right? So the, the, the should it is kind of yes, in the sense that when I was rowing, if you had told me that Ohio State was going to win the NCAA championship three years running, I would have laughed at you because I've been like, Ohio State women's team, what are you talking about, right? Virginia, Ohio State, the rise of Texas. Yes, that is a byproduct of football schools. On the men's side, it's more complex. To Mike's point, Kerry's point, does lightweight rowing get axed? If we go NCAA, does the IRA maintain lightweight rowing and that's it? So that's one issue that, that brings up. Also, the Ivies, they're not given scholarships. They give financial aid. Do they care if it's NCAA? All these endowed programs, do they even care? Um, that's part of it. And to Mike's point, how do you convince an athletic director that you, you know, rowing an expensive sport should become NCAA? And, but we have seen in one, one particular situation when Northeastern ditched their football team, NU Rowing got scholarships and they've risen. So I really think it's going to come down to CTEs and football. If that becomes a growing problem, rowing will benefit tremendously and we can move NCAA. That's my answer. Uh, yeah, listen, hold on. You stay quiet, Mike. Hold on here for a second. You know, there is something here that – it's this under this overarching thing that we're going to talk about when we get back from the, our, a word from our sponsors. But I'm going to tell you right now, before we get to break, we have Luke at 10 points. Luke, you killed it that last round there. Lindsay at 10, Carrie and Mike tied for nine points. We come back from a word from our sponsors. Those two are going to go at it for a 15 second first round. And then we're going to uh, crown our winner into the next, uh, into the next round. More from us soon. Well, we're back, and uh, this is this might seem like a reoccurring theme, but uh, we do have another tie, and we're going to have to go into a tiebreaker. But before we do, we just got through two really important questions that I think are going to shape the way rowing is in America and possibly the world over the next 10 years. If you have a comment, give us your feedback right now. Now's the time to start giving us your thoughts and feedback. So if you agree with Mike or disagree with Carrie or Lindsay, just let us know. Let us know how, you, how, 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 uh, how they're doing so far. Now, to do the tiebreaker, we're going to go back to the original question, uh, Mike and Carrie. You both are going to have 20 to 30 seconds to speak your case. And, and, and we're doing that because you both disagree with one another, okay? So I'm going to let Carrie go first on this one. Ladies first. Mm -hmm. Carrie, you're going to have 20, 30 seconds to speak your case on what you feel about lightweight rowing. You're on the clock. Look, to expand on what I was saying, if you have lightweights be part of the NCAA team, you're going to protect those athletes from not being overlooked by recruiting coaches because they are smaller and on paper, they're not going to look as fast, but they are boat movers and they've proven that before. And it also, by having one program, you're going to have fluidity. So maybe they'll be recruited as a lightweight, race that as a freshman. Maybe it's more healthy for them by sophomore I, year to be open. I, like, I think, you know, that's a hard Thing to beat here i want to see you're gonna to have to bring your a game man uh you know the question you're on the clock if we want rowing to be better it's got to be more relatable you look at comparable sports like track and swimming they're very straightforward and that's why they're more popular 
in this situation, the fast lightweights, the, the true fast lightweights are going to be fine. They're going to make boats and they're going to be contributors on every level. The slow lightweights will not, and I'm not going to lose sleep over them. Time. Gosh, you know, I need to take a, I, man, that is a hard, I, man, that's tough guys. I'm going to, um, I'm going to give this one to Carrie. I just like her, her argument. She's right. If NCAA is tracking and mapping lightweight rowing, you open up the sport to more athletes. And we know the way the rules are with the NCAA, they'll make sure those athletes are safe, comfortable, and healthy. So I disagree. I think lightweight rowing should be gone, but I like Carrie's argument. So when we get back, uh, we're going to uh, – actually, no, we're not getting right back. We're going right into the next round here. We're going to take the first two questions, all right? And you get to talk to Luke and Carrie and argue your points – on, on those two topics. Straight from the horse's mouth, I know that the fastest lightweights, going back to what Mike said, the fastest lightweights want to be with heavyweights because they're gonna drag them forward. That's what makes them gritty in the first place. Once they go to just lightweights only, then they start to win this thing that I had a coach say to me once, why would you wanna win the JV of the, you know what I mean? Like, why would you wanna be the fastest of the second fastest? Which made sense in the point, you know? Like, so to do them the best service of taking the best care of themselves, have the most resources available to them and not be looked at as like this other subset, to look at the sport, to push it forward, especially because I disagree with the influence of erg scores only and size yeah. only. The best athletes out there are not the biggest so there is this perfect harmony of this middle group that really makes boats that make boats go and Carrie, at the collegiate level. Carrie, yeah. what are you thinking? Carrie, Lindsay Carrie. and I are on the exact same page here. Oh, then you quiet down. Luke, you're on the clock. We've seen Luke. it. We've seen this it. Is perfect. Just, they're muted. Luke, I, this is, I just think that I think the debate should uh, should evolve into just how central the lightweights are, especially in the second question. Like, what happens to lightweight rowing if we go? men's NCAA, what, what happens to them? Who, you know, there's the a e EARCs are strong, but if we're talking inclusion and growth of the sport, you know, is cutting off the, you know, the hand to save the body. Is that, is that what we're trying to do with, with NCAA, right? I, I mean, what, who, ha, how do we gain? And, and club, co club coaches on the men's side will tell you that club coaching is fine. It's thriving. It's great on the men's side. And that's, you know, a lot of those cl club programs rose out of NCAA programs that are, you know, the women's programs. Um, right. So, so let me, okay, you know what? Mute them and let me talk now. I want to talk now, okay? I'm going to, gloves are coming off. Listen, I wrote at the IRA and a lot earlier than, well, more recently than you guys. Luke, you're an old man, okay? I wrote fairly recently. Now, you still follow under the NCAA rules anyway, right? You still have restrictions. You still follow everything. And I am a huge believer in that the NCAA being a billion dollar organization can better fund and support college rowing on a whole. I love betting shirts. I only won a couple in my career. I wasn't that fast, not like Luke or, or, or Mike, but still guys. Am I officially unmuted? You're unmuted now. So yes. You're me so here's the, we, we make these things with the NCAA, right? If you look at women's rowing always parallels with football. In football, the number of coaches that they have for those number of people far exceed the number of support staff that there is in rowing. I mean, unless you're one of the big schools and getting nine volunteers. In rowing, you get one GA. In the last three years, they've gotten a fourth coach. And if your team's 200 people and you have three, maybe four tops five and if you get let volunteers Carrie, you let, let carrie and luke come back in go ahead go as ahead. much as it's an ncaa sport they actually aren't getting as much support so it's gonna happen Lindsay's a talker so i just knew that we weren't gonna be able to stop her talking or interrupt because she just one sentence on to the next anyway the point i want to make about either topic so i can have a moment um again ira becoming nca i don't think that's a priority right now i think there's a lot of other things that we need to address first I think that to Mike's point, IRA is doing just fine. Yes, there's like a lot of unfairness and some programs are not gonna ever have, be as competitive without the number of scholarships, whatnot. We all love an underdog, just try to make it work. Let's go. Hmm. Okay, to the NCA lightweight program, women's rowing. I want, I I want just one point and it's I wanna talk for Mike to... because Mike can't talk. <laughs> I wanna talk for Mike. So real quick stat. It, this may still hold true. I think it does. Nationwide, the total number of scholarships available to men across all rowing programs is lower than the number of scholarships available to women in the Pac-12 alone. If we want to grow rowing, if we want to get the best athletes, like Mike really wants the best athletes, scholarships help. Parents want their kids to go to college and have and, and to get scholarship dollars. So why wouldn't we create a situation in which more scholarships are available 
to you know, men's rowing. Here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. Listen to me very carefully. If rowing was more freaking fun to watch, you'd have a lot more people coming down to watch. You'd have a lot more fans coming. And then the NCAA would really love us, right? We have got to think outside the box. You guys are talking about the same BS that we've been talking about forever. Go ahead. Bring it back on. Bring it back on, CJ. Go ahead. About restructuring the NCAA program. I don't think I want to see another second eight, third eight. Yeah. Top four is probably the worst boat class ever, and it hurts our bodies, okay? So, mm. you know, to Mike's point about this is so well structured, why don't we have some ranking system where we have different boat classes? Doing this at the collegiate level will impact high school because that's where they're trying to get recruited to. Doing it at the collegiate level will also impact elite rowing. So if you make a change at the collegiate level for women's rowing, it's going to have such a bigger effect than making a change at the high school. Uh, when we come back from our, from our sponsors, we're going to crown the next two winners moving on <laughs> to the face-off. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have a, an opinion, which I know all you rowers do, give us your opinion in, uh, in our in our in our channel here. More from us real soon. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Luke from Rower Academy, where we give you the information, tools, and training you need to successfully navigate the college recruiting process. Check us out at roweracademy.com and start training for your future today. And we're back. So uh, this, is, this has been, we've struck a nerve. We've struck a nerve in the sport of rowing. And uh, as I was tallying up the scores and trying to figure out who the winner was in this one, it dawned on me that the two ones advancing, both Olympic champions, uh, it's, the, it's, it's the old rower and the newer rower. So an 08 champion and a 2016 champion. And uh, it just means, Luke, another loss for you. I'm sorry, man. Uh, and, you know, Mike, you're gone. You're out. Although they were using your damn points the entire time. So here we are. We are in the showdown. This is the part of the episode where I bring in new questions and the two of you go off face to face. You have anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute to answer your, to my, my question. There might be some rebuttals and uh, we'll determine the winner after that. So let's get uh, Carrie on first. Now, Carrie, the question for you is, given all of what we've just been talking about, if you are the athletic director of a program or no, better yet, if you are running the NCAA right now in charge, what do you do for the first 90 days? You're on the clock. Well, I've already said it like three times, but I would restructure at least women's championship rowing. would love to see it on the men's side as well. Some sculling events, put lightweights and the heavyweights for health reasons as well. So now you're going to have more overlap. Coaches can see who's moving the boats faster. Mm -hmm. They might want to put a lightweight rower in their, the bow seat of their eight. They may want a lightweight rower in the heavyweight quad, whatever. So yes, that. Um, I also think to help, bring some fairness to those varsity men's programs that do exist. Maybe having some rules that really force coaches to share resources a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I've worked, you know, at Oregon state, I saw Washington firsthand as an athlete and I think they did a pretty good job of trying to help each other out and just make uh, it not bad. So I'm just going to just sum this up. Um, restructuring, adding sculling, sharing resources. Those are really strong points. I like that. I like what you're saying. There's one topic, and I'm, I'm going to wait till Lindsay talks, actually, because I don't want to give her this great point, all right? I want to, you're, you're, your back's up against the wall here, Lindsay. You're the newbie. Oh, You've never done this before. The question for you, if you are in charge of the NCAA right now today, what do the next 90 days look like? You're on the clock. Since I can't say this, something that Carrie already said, what I would do is I would take the championship itself and make it fewer boats so that more actual teams could go to the championship. If the men's basketball NCAA has 64 plus play-ins, there used to be the at-large. I don't like the at-large notion, but why not do one eight and one instead of a Cox four, or a straight four, or something like that. That way it really is about the rowers themselves. On the international level, there's only one Olympic Cox event, right? There are very few Coxing spots, but that'll also take care of some of the recruiting problems, some of these smaller kids kids that are lightweights that would naturally help the lightweight because then because to be honest Carrie you've recruited in the division one as well kids want to go to the programs that go to the NCAA championship not everybody wants to win the Olympics some people just want to go on the trips. time you know Carrie you weren't kidding she does talk and talk and talk and talk but uh her point was she starts at the top she starts at changing the championship structure which then feeds everything else up now listen Carrie you have another 30 seconds okay because again we struck a nerve. So, Carrie, 
Just, you'll, Lindsay will have the same 30 seconds. You're gonna have 30 seconds to go ahead. Let's get her back on the, uh, on the clock here. Uh, thank you, CJ. Carrie, same question. Go ahead and continue your argument. You're on the clock, 30 seconds. I literally said restructure the NCA racing program. That was the first thing I said. She said championship oh, though. You didn't. Other words, like, okay. Anyway, I'm not going to waste time on that. Um, my point would be, okay, I don't think IRA should be NCA sanctioned. I think that there's a lot more things. We just had women's rowing have equal number of events on the elite level. That was 2017. 1990, what was it? Seven was our first year uh nca women's sports it was 1972 when title nine came into play so it's a long time coming change is going to take a while so as far as you're men's off the clock rolling, time done so i like it Lindsay. Lindsay, you're back on here you have another 30 or so seconds to to state your case you're on the clock so I've got my ideal hat and my realistic hat. So the realistic hat is still, it's about football and dollars. And so if we, you know, how you can make the same size team just fight for more spots, that would be, that would, because athletic director, I want my, to say my programs, you know, are vying for the Sears Cup because now they went to the NCAA championship. If fewer actual boats go and more, or the same number of boats go, but from more schools, I as an athletic director is going to reflect better on me. I'm going to keep putting money into it, whether it's 200 people that field one or two boats or 20 people that field one or two Time. boats. When we get back from a word from our sponsors, we are going to crown the winner. More from us after a word from our sponsors. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Ronut.com, the professional rigging resource for rowers. Today I want to introduce Ronut Black, the most advanced line of rigging hardware. Rona Black was developed from our existing high-quality 316 stainless steel fasteners that we further enhanced by adding a PTFE polymer coating. This coating protects your riggers, simplifies the rigging and derigging process, and has a striking matte black finish. Available today in limited quantities, you can learn more at Rona.com. And we're back. So this was a tough one for me. And unlike previous episodes, I'm making the decision on who wins. I don't want to get anybody else's opinion on this one. Okay. Now I know we're changing things up. We're trying things new. This is all new to us. Mike, you've had to sit here for 25 minutes and listen to everybody else talk. You got 30 seconds, man. How are you feeling today? Uh, I hate losing. And uh, I got, <laughs> got a nice, uh, nice serving of that today. Um, I will say, man, that that last question was pretty hard. I think the uh, the ladies gave some pretty good answers. That would have caught me off guard. That was a good one. No, I yeah, I I think you're right. Uh, and thank you for being part of this show here, uh, Luke. Third place, still still not making it. How are you feeling today? You know, uh, middle of the pack. That's my trend. Someday it's going to pay off. Someday I'm going to just keep showing up. I'm going to keep trying. Uh, but you know, the ladies were bringing some really really good points and i couldn't compete with that uh two things i hope going forward from what we're talking about i like what carrie was saying about info share i would love if we could start talking about coaches sharing more information and mm -hmm. and not being so closed off about Let's cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. that's enough that's enough you had your time oh you want another go ahead luke bring him back on go ahead close it off go ahead go and ahead last luke. thing since we are talking ncaa it's all about the dollars I think yeah. it really goes back to figuring out how to monetize collegiate rowing as a viewable sport. It mm -hmm. solves the problem for both genders. I like it. The winner. Carrie, you took it. Carrie's the winner. Lindsay, I'm sorry. You did a great job. Second place. Absolutely look at the look of shock on her face. <laughs> <laughs> she won the 2016 Olympics. She won today. This is her second uh, win ever on the episode. Lindsay, thank you for being here. Tell us how you feel, how you thought the show went. What are you, what are you feeling right now? I mean, do I get to come back so that I can Absolutely. really win? Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's a fantastic, like, meeting of the minds with, with conversation. I have to say that no, not one of these questions could we possibly answer in the 30 or 60 second amount of time. There are coaches out there that are doing the right things, particularly with lightweight rowing, and those coaches and those athletes will suffer because some people actually are 155 pounds or 125 pounds and it's this sport but it you know you turn back to mike's point of there isn't short first in basketball right there isn't this is the one non-contact you know weight class sport that really exists if you can think of one correct me if i'm wrong i don't know everything despite being able to talk like i <laughs> well listen it has been a pleasure having you part of this and i know everyone here the veterans will all agree that you need to be part of this for the future and more episodes thank you carrie two-time champion here you did it you pulled out a victory how are you feeling today 
This one, I was surprised because I just thought, you know, newcomer, we were just going to be like, yo, Lindsay. Give her, yeah, give her the win. So I was surprised. But I, I think what we're all saying, which is awesome, is we really want to see this sport elevated and we want to mm -hmm. see more engagement with, you know, people, spectators. We want to see more resources for our teams, both men and women. Um, and it's just hopefully we're just throwing out headlines, right? Like hopefully this can start, you know, some discussions that actually can, you know, start to make some changes in our sport. And I would say starting with collegiate, because I think that will have the most impact. So well said. And, and look, for those listening and watching, we want to make a very strong point here. We all, everyone here wants the same thing. We want our sport to grow and to keep getting better. You may disagree with what we're saying, but at the end of the day, we all have the same goal and the same well intentions, right? We all want the same thing. We want more rowers boat. in the water. What'd you say, Carrie? So we're all in the same boat. All in the same boat. I love that. What a great way to end this episode. I hope you've enjoyed watching episode four of Coaches Yelling. We've had some incredible arguments, some great people part of the show. If you want to be part of the show, reach out to us. If you like or dislike what people are saying, give your chance, comment, add to the storyline. Thank you for watching.